I'm gonna give you a proper introduction on the main Scrap Life Garage channel to my 1993 CYM drag race car project in the very near future. But for this video, the engine that's going into this car is very, very special. And I wanted to give you a behind the scenes look at the 13B REW engine that we're gonna be using in this chassis. And also a little bit of a preview of the work that Mike down at Angel Motorsports is gonna be performing. Mr. Vargas himself, and we are gonna break down this reman and basically see what I got from Mazda. I'm sure he knows that Mazda has their own kind of share of issues with reman engines, even low mileage one or no mileage ones. So the best part about it that we know is gonna be good is it's definitely the house is going to be really good condition to be in a reman. Uh, as long as it didn't blow a seal or anything like that. And the plates are going to have real low step wear because it is a fresh motor. That's nice. Uh, got hidden chambers. <laughs> not a good start. I mean, it's not. It just looks weird in there, right? Uh, it does, yeah. Huh. It has a lot of trash in it on the pickup too. Okay, that's a little bit interesting. I guess when they resealed the pan, they went a little bit overboard. Yeah, so you should you don't use a paper gasket on these. The engine mount puts pressure on this area and it will just start eating away at the gasket. And it will leak a lot. The last head of this shit in. When that one doesn't want to come off, like you gotta put some juice on it with a long bre uh, breaker bar. So this is the part where it's getting a little bit weird. You know, the, the gasket and the red RPV is like, it's like, eh, somebody could have done it. Now this. Mazda doesn't do this. So someone's been in here before. Mmm. Because Mazda uses a great sealant on every engine. They're not gonna, this is exhaust RT. So this means that somebody's been here before. What percentage of engines, you know, give you this problem? This one? <laughs> it would be this one, right? <laughs> you should pop out really easily. This is like, a, like I said, like a ball, jo ball joint, like taper. So it's supposed to just like pop out. Nope. Oh, that looked like a move. Yeah, it's like easy. Okay, I don't think so. Was that the wall? It was just this. The wall? Oh, dang it, that's why it popped up. No, see, it's popped up. Oh, yeah. It's no all. No fing way. No shot. Just a little bit of heat, that's all it needed. Oh my god. Holy. <laughs> it was not supposed to have whatever that is, it's supposed to be shiny. Maybe someone did take the front bolt to do a, a front main seal. So we're still back, we're back on the, it's a stock engine again. For those that have been keeping track, this is the engine that came in the now K-Swap FD that I bought from Orlando, Florida. The car was kind of a mess, but I was told that this was a roughly 5,000 mile reman engine. And obviously we have question marks about that. It definitely got a good 20 years on it, looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> So this might be the original engine, is what yeah, you're telling me. Yeah. I got got apparently. The old pump will tell us, the bearings will tell us the mileage. That Mazda doesn't do that. Someone wrote down at what PSI it opens at. This old pump has like some gouges on it. So we're definitely gonna have to replace that. Yeah. All right, so there's the sequence of losing it. In the past 16 years, it don't matter. So, if you're in the comments saying that I didn't use the sequence to lose it, trust me, <laughs> yeah. I know better. Now, tightening, that's a different story. They're just all torn up, like, 
this is no way that they have 5,000 pounds. The plates look fresh. And the rotors are looking new too. Someone's been messing with it. Like internally it's stuck. So I think it is a low mile engine. Not 5,000 miles, but it is a low mile. And no copper. A little bit of wear down here. That's probably from the rear uh, counterweight that they put on it. Like being a little bit off balance. <coughs> That plate on the seal, see the gap between the corner seal? No bueno? Yeah, that, so that causes blowback. So if we would have done like a legitimate compression test on this, would something like that show up on a compression test? Yes. Okay. So you would, what you will see is like, this one will have good compression, this one will have good compression, this one's gonna probably have 10 less. Okay. As we touched on earlier, this is something that can happen directly from Mazda though, right? Like these yeah. are the types of issues. Yeah, so that's like, because they're, they're an assembly line. They're just picking stuff from bins and they're like, this one fits here. You know, this is what this rotor calls for. They're already pre-cut from Mazda, so they just put them in there. Uh, we get oversized ones and the oversized ones we cut them by hand. So each slot is different and each seal we cut is, in the, is independent to the slot of the rotor front rear so we don't you know we don't just do the pre-cut ones pull it out real quick so wear wise you know we don't have any corner gouges we don't have cracking on the spark plug area usually like high mileage motors will have cracks right here on the chrome nothing detrimental but it's just it shows the age see now this part not really um this is uh three piece apex seals they got one two and the third one over there they stopped doing this in the 95 they used a two-piece one so and then this wear right here let's see how it's flattening the spring mm -hmm. and over here it's like pointy like even worse that means that uh, it definitely didn't have 5,000 miles. So it's still good condition, but it, it's not a 5,000 mile motor. I literally feel like I'm on a roller coaster. It's up, <laughs> it's down, it's 5,000 miles, it's 100,000 miles. Like So this rotor is good. No issues. One of the ways to tell the mileage is looking at the bearings. And that's a lot of copper. Yeah, that looks very, very worn. Yeah, so, you know, that, there's not, it's, it, I wouldn't use this bearing, given that it's showing copper. Usually, if it's showing more than like 10, 5, 10%, you know, you wouldn't even use it on any engine at whatsoever, let alone a rotary. But We'll have, we'll check the front, make sure it doesn't have any wobble, but you know, it doesn't look bad. It's obviously got some lines on it, but those can get polished up. Now that bearing is way worse. Holy shit. Uh-oh. <laughs> if, if you're concerned, that means I should be very well, concerned. Well, no, I mean, it, I don't think it spun it. As long as it didn't spin it, we're good to go, but that's a lot of repair. Housing, perfect, zero issues. That is a lot of corrosion, but it's not, there's nothing really bad going on. It can get cleaned up. But the housing look good, so we can send these to get semi purple. Oh yeah, that's the plan with this engine. Uh, you look right here. The seal was it was broken right there. Yeah. So what we're gonna look for when we flip it is there's a notch right here. That's where the bearing locks in pretty much. If that notch is somewhere else, this rotor is not as we can't use it. Because what happens is the bearing is spins and it wears out that where it sits in. 
Fingers crossed. So, yep, we're good. It's still locked in place. So it's just highly, highly worn. That is insane. You know, like I said, like usually you can get away with like five, ten percent. Not a hundred percent. Like hundred <laughs> percent, like copper. Like that's all the copper. Maybe that's pretty much what we saw in the whole band. Maybe hundred ten percent. So this is best case scenario though, as in like, if it spun this bearing, it was about to, like destroy it. It would have destroyed the plate, it would have destroyed the housing, it would have destroyed the gear, the rotor, like, so it's a good time to like open it up right now. Yeah, cause this was a maintenance thing. That's why I went ahead and did this. It wasn't, you know, about the power. The 5,000 miles we were looking for, not really, but it's really good condition stuff, so we're good to go with that. I, you can you can tell how crusty the motor was compared to this one. I mean, but this is going to be the big change that we're making, though. We are doing a semi-peripheral ported engine, and what that does is it opens up another intake port in the housing here that isn't there from Mazda. Nope. So if you look at this side. Now this is an intake opening. You're making it from four port to six port and yours is non-existent. There's a coolant passage that passes through there. So you just gotta punch a hole through it, seal the sides and we use these plates right here to give it some structural support also on top of that. And it'll make all the horsepower. So a lot of bad news is we were tearing down this engine, but the important thing is that we got all the pieces that we need out of it to proceed with the plan. Now we just have a couple of weeks to wait on the machining for the housings and then we'll be back to pick up our fresh motor. So we have everything we need to build this engine. We have rotor bearings, main bearings, oil control O-rings, front and rear main seal, front cover gasket, side seal, side seal springs, apex seal springs, corner seal springs, corner seals, and apex seals and water seals. So this is everything you need to put an engine together. So freshies for the stationaries, along with the rotors. Next is cleaning up the rotors, cutting side seals. Each one of these is a little bit longer than it's supposed to. So we have to cut it to length, two thousands clearance on the end. I got these two side seals cut with inspect. So we go pull it to this side. Right there. then this one same thing now this one is too tight it won't go in so th even though it goes into a slot you can't use it because what happens is when heat expands the side seal the side seal starts pushing outwards and it pinches these corner seals so if you can see right here see it's moving the side seal is too it's too tight so we need two thousands clearance on the side seal so we're gonna keep going at it pretty much remove it you go on a flat piece of granite or glass or whatever you have and you have some 400 grit sandpaper and you keep going back and forth back and forth until you get the clearance 
that you need. It's obvious that Mike knows these rotaries through and through. If you want more technical info on this engine, head on over to his channel that I linked down in the description below where there's a video on this engine's construction. As for the full build on the CYM, be sure to stay tuned to the main Scrap Life Garage YouTube channel very soon.